Yo, it's GT and welcome to the V, just kidding. Let's start this off as usual with explaining parsing rules first. So phase 1 is completely removed from this encounter, meaning any damage to adds in the tunnel or arena prior to the pulling the boss is not counting towards parses, only damage to Thorium counts. Also just like I mentioned in previous guides, in order to achieve the 99 parse, you have to kill Thorium on hard mode. If you are trying to parse doing normal mode, you will never get the 99 as all hard modes rank higher than lower difficulties. Last couple of weeks was a bit tougher to get the 99 as people were using the haste buff from mind controlling one of the ads in phase 1. However, this was fixed by Warcraft logs and using the aura of celerity now invalidates the rankings on the boss and the complete raid rankings. So there is no need to pre-pod when pulling the ads in arena as any damage here is not being counted. So save your potion when you'll be fighting Thorim in the arena in second phase and use it coupled with heroism. If you don't want your damage meter during the encounter to look bad, you can use Starfall on the first pack of ads and perhaps even Hurricane on all of clarity procs or even without the proc if you are sure this will not cause money issues later on. However, do not use any long CDs such as trends here as you want them ready when you actually pull the boss. I'm usually going in the tunnel not much to say here about min-maxing DPS, as again, no damage here is counted. However, depending on your raid DPS and how quickly you can make it, I usually have time to spare one more starfall before the cooldown will be ready again on the actual pull of the boss in phase 2. You want to have everything ready for the pull, meaning hyperspeed accelerators, potion of speed or wild magic, starfall, trends and onus trinkets, especially if you are using heroism right off the bat. So rather don't pop trinkets in the tunnel at all, better be safe than sorry. You want to also make sure your Lunar Eclipse internal cooldown timer is reset and you are tracking it. Rather stop DPS on the last add in the tunnel if you just came out of your Solar Eclipse, not to accidentally proc the Lunar, as that would mean going for Solar Eclipse as the first one on the actual pull of the boss, and we don't want that. Same story for your internal cooldown timer of your proc based trinkets such as Sundial, Dying Curse, Flare or Plea. If you are using any of those, make sure you are tracking the timers both for the proc and for the internal cooldown and act accordingly based on the timer. You want it to be ready for the pull, so if the timer is about to be ready again on the last add, stop DPS not to accidentally proc it. So phase 2 is where the actual fight starts on the logs. If all the adds in the tunnel are dead and you are running towards the boss, don't forget to avoid the middle trap and cast fairy fire and both dots on the boss while jumping down to save global cooldowns. Go to your designated position depending on your guild strategy and cast instant spells such as trends and starfall on the move so you are not losing any DPS while running. We are standing in the pairs and luckily my position is directly under the boss so don't have to move almost at all after the jump. So with all the cooldowns mentioned previously ready, fairy fire and dots are already on the boss, I land on the ground and I like to start with casting trends first to make sure they are out before the heroism is being casted, especially if you are slightly behind in the tunnel or you have unpatient shamans in raid. After that, it's either starfall and proceeding with eclipse rotation or you might want to delay a bit for your trinkets to proc before casting starfall. Both are viable to achieve the 99 but I prefer casting Starfall right away after trends because First, it's proking nature's grace, so my first cast will already benefit from faster cast times to get to Lunar Eclipse quicker. Second, when I have the internal cooldowns of the trinkets ready, chances are high they will proc fairly soon anyway, so Starfall can still benefit from this spell power boost because we can't snapshot Starfall. Third, I don't want to sacrifice global cooldowns from my first Joycey Lunar Eclipse coupled with Heroism, Onus Trinkets, Hyperspeed Accelerators and Potion other than Starfire Nuke and I can find myself in the situation when I decide to delay Starfall. Fourth, it's easier for managing the fight as I don't have to pay attention to internal cooldowns anymore and trying to figure out when to pop Starfall but rather focus on other things. And fifth, if I delay way too much trying to wait for the perfect moment, I might miss one extra Starfall that could have been squeezed in if I wasn't delaying. Don't forget to mouse over the boss if you are using Serenite Bomb and Starfall mouse over macro as I am as well. And also if I get the lucky early 4 piece tier 8 instant Starfire proc, I'm delaying this first one, waiting for the first Lunar Eclipse, 
because popping it right away will not only not benefit from Lunar Eclipse extra damage, but most importantly, this can accidentally procure Solar Eclipse instead of Lunar as the first one. So I'm doing Fairy Fire, Insect Swarm, Moonfire, Jump Down, Trance, Starfall, and proceeding with Exit Rotation, fishing for Lunar Eclipse with first few wraths. Hopefully, I'll also have Heroism by the time I reach Lunar Eclipse, so under the effect of Heroism and reaching the first Lunar Eclipse, this is where I want to pop everything at the same time, meaning Potion of Speed, Hyperspeed Accelerators, and Onius Trinkets for some juicy Starfire Nuke. I'm using Simple Macro for this, and I just pop and start casting Starfire immediately. If you're in luck, hopefully your proc based trinkets will proc somewhere at this time as well for some heavy Starfire Blasting. The ideal scenario where stars align is obviously Lunar Eclipse procs on first wrath cast together with trinkets and heroism is casted immediately, so not only a majority of starfall gets this spell power boost as well, but you have the full duration of trinket proc on whole Lunar Eclipse with the quickest starfire cast available. As you can see on the log and recording from my recent and highest 99 parts, I wasn't far off from this scenario. The Lunar Eclipse took a bit of time to proc unfortunately, and Starfall already finished at this point, but the Flare of the Heavens trinket proc aligned perfectly with the Lunar Eclipse, so it was time to pop everything. I decided to use Potion of Wild Magic instead of Potion of Speed this time around for some serious Starfire Blasting as I was already at 1.3 cast time with Hyperspeed Accelerators, Haze Buff from Onyus Scale of the Fates trinkets and while Heroism was active. There are a few abilities you need to pay attention to that can hinder your 99 parts by either forcing you to move a lot, or perhaps even kill you. First one is Chain Lightning, that can bounce to an unlimited amount of players, dealing 50% more damage to each target. For this reason, we are spread and standing in pairs, so don't hug other group of players when moving from other mechanics, and get back to your position ASAP. Another one is Frostball Volley or Frost Blizzard that is circling around the room. This can hinder your parts if you are forced to move a lot if your healers can't handle you standing still. I'm usually popping bar skin to help our healers for the damage reduction and trying to outlast it without moving away not to lose DPS by moving, but as well as I'm hoping for Oaken Frenzy proc to actually increase DPS. Last one that will probably affect your parses the most is the lightning charge when he's gonna start charging one of the pillars before it's gonna explode in cone or pizza shape between Torim and the pillars. Obviously the dream scenario is pray for RNG gods not to get a single one of those so you can stand still the whole encounter, but this will probably never happen. Hopefully you don't have to move out of it more than once or twice otherwise it can affect your parsies. Also make sure you are always casting instant cast on the move, trying to avoid this mechanic and try to time it with either refreshing your dots without clipping them or instant 4-piece tier 8 starfire proc, inner rate or starfall to minimize the DPS loss and use rocky boots here. Other than that, it's pretty much a single target nuke with few twists depending on your guild strategy, so achieving 99 at this point depends on how well and picture perfect you can execute your eclipse rotation with no mistakes. However, of course there are few factors you can't control unfortunately that might help you further to achieve the 99 or make it more difficult. Just to name few, could be RNG so you don't have to move a lot because of mechanics, RNG when and what procs and if it aligns with other things, if you have to battle race or not, both uptime and value of the spell power of the demonic pact as this varies even mid fight and obviously kill time as well. The rule of thumb is faster kill time equals to better DPS because of the better uptime of heroism, procs and cooldowns. So hopefully all of the mention is in your favor and when you make zero mistakes on your side as well, it shouldn't be a problem to get the 99. Regarding the glyphs, I'm usually running Insect Swarm, Starfall and Starfire and Torim is no exception as this trio can dish out the most DPS here. The glyph of focus is actually viable as an alternative to Starfire since the range is not a crucial factor here, as well if you are forced to move a lot and clip your Moonfire, then the Starfire loses its value. Both should be viable for achieving the 99 parts, but on paper and as well as my personal preference, it's Insect Swarm, Starfall and Starfire. I'm also using my default single target spec here that was already showcased in previous guides such as XT, Razor Scale or Ignis. 
I'm going for 3 points in Brambles to min-max the single target DPS as well as the Oaken Frenzy as he can proc here. Looking at logs, I got even 3 procs on one of my kills. And don't forget, Oaken Frenzy is actually replenishing your mana as well, so I'm not running into any mana issues here, so not picking any out of the mana talents at all. However, I got fairly high crit rating already, which helps to get mana back, as well as I'm usually free to innerate myself, or oftentimes even in group with Resto Shaman, so I'll get the benefit of mana tie totem. If you don't have these perks, and you are running into mana problems, feel free to shift around few talents and go for Omen of Clarity, Moonglow or Dream State instead of Oaken Frenzy and Brambles. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and if you like the content, I would appreciate if you like the video and subscribe. Thank you and good luck.